In the last video uploaded here on Wrestling Bios, we took a look at William Regal's career from 1983 right up until his WCW release in 1998. Let's waste no time as we continue looking at William Regal's career in professional wrestling. As a quick heads up, I intended this to be a two part series, but there's so much to dig into that it's only fair that we extend this series and give Regal the proper time he deserves. So this is now part 2 of a 3 part series. Say what you want about Vince McMahon, but the guy does give people second chances, if it's right for business. William Regal is a prime example of this fact. Regal's first run in the WWF lasted only 7 months, mainly due to his struggles with addiction. In his first run, Vince Russo tried to repackage William Regal into a brand new character, a character that is still quite polarising with fans today. I know there are people out there that liked the man's man stuff, something Regal was doing way before Mr. Seth Rollins, <clears throat> but yeah, I was such a huge fan of the Lord Stephen Regal character that I can remember feeling quite baffled by the whole thing. But anyway, before that, Regal had his debut WWF match on the June 20th, 1998 edition of Monday Night Raw, where he defeated Draws with the Regal stretch. Stephen Regal was introduced to the ring by Sable as one of the greatest wrestling stars in the world, and he made his way to the ring with some generic rock music that's on par to the stuff that you hear on these videos. I mentioned this because I really liked his main WCW theme. If you're a more modern fan and you haven't heard it, have a search for it. Jim Ross done a great job of putting Regal over during the match on commentary, talking about his accomplishments outside of the WWF, but there are a few things about this debut match that we need to talk about. The first thing is, it seemed there was just as much attention given to Sable, who was doing commentary for the match, as there was given to Steven Regal. Secondly, William Regal worked a lot of holds during the match, which is great to look back on now, but in the summer of 1998 in the WWF, when the Attitude Era was in full swing, there were definitely fans who didn't warm up to this type of wrestling match. Wrestling in itself was evolving during this period, and the philosophy of Crash TV didn't really mix well with the philosophy of Catch Wrestling. This isn't a knock William Regal, far from it, but he looked like a throwback wrestler here, and it seemed that the new breed of Attitude Era fans didn't really know how to take him. Vince McMahon believed Regal needed to get in better shape, so he was sent to Dory Funk's training camp. He injured his ankle while at the camp and caused further damage to his leg when he got home. Regal returned in the fall of 1998 after this injury as the man's man, a character who would do manly things like operating a digger and chopping wood. Vince Russo is credited for the creation of the man's man gimmick and again I know some people enjoyed it, some people loved the theme song, but I would have preferred if the WWF tried to stick with the Lord Steven Regal gimmick and try some different things with that character. It was clear though that creative felt that Steve Regal who showed up to face draws in his debut just wasn't going to cut it and Creative also thought that Regal needed a complete gimmick change in order to survive in the WWE. Give Regal credit, he made the man's man gimmick humorous and as mentioned earlier, the fans didn't seem to know how to take Steve Regal during his initial debut, so maybe the character change was more of a necessity. The man's man wouldn't last long unfortunately, in January of 1999, Regal was let go from the WWF due to his problems with benzos and pain pills. After getting released from the WWF, Regal checked himself into rehab. I don't want to linger on about the man's past troubles. If you are interested in learning more, Regal has been very honest and candid about his issues in his book and in subsequent interviews. One thing that needs to be pointed out though. William Regal does not blame the wrestling business for his past problems. Regal takes full responsibility for his actions, something a lot of other past superstars still refuse to do. After coming out of rehab, William Regal found himself back in WCW working again as Lord Stephen Regal. 
He made his pay-per-view return at Bash at the Beach 99 in a Junkyard Invitational match, a hardcore bout where the only way you could win was by jumping over the Junkyard gate. The match was maybe a little too chaotic with way too many people involved. Regal would then join forces with Fit Finlay and Dave Taylor, his old Blue Bloods partner, and the remainder of Regal's time in WCW was mainly in tag matches, feuding with Jimmy Hart's first family and the Filthy Animals. In late February 2000, Regal lost a career versus career match against Hacksaw Jim Duggan on WCW Saturday night. This was done to explain Regal's release from WCW. Regal's in-ring return happened on the Brand Pillman Tribute Show, held on the 26th of May 2000. This is another good William Regal match, but unfortunately, the upload on the internet at the moment that you can find on YouTube doesn't have the best quality. If you can get past this, do take the time to watch this match. Not only does it showcase two extremely proficient technical wrestlers, it also shows that Regal still had a lot to give to the world of wrestling. As mentioned at the top of this video, Vince McMahon gave Regal a second chance when he was rehired by the WWF in 2000. Regal was sent to Memphis Championship Wrestling to prepare for his WWF return that happened on September 18, 2000 on Monday Night Raw. Regal came back to the WWF as Stephen William Regal, once again portraying a snobbish Brit who would show the American fans some manners. Just one month later, Regal picked up his first WWF title, the European Championship, when he defeated Al Snow on the October 16th episode of Raw. Regal would lose the belt to Hardcore Holly at the UK exclusive pay-per-view Rebellion before quickly regaining the title back two days later on Raw, but he would go on to drop the belt to test in January. After defeating Al Snow on the March 8th episode of Smackdown in 2001, Regal was made the commissioner and also the official goodwill ambassador of the World Wrestling Federation. Regal worked with Tajiri during this time in some hilarious backstage promos that still make me laugh to this day. It was great going back and watching this stuff. The role was perfect for Regal, with his mannerisms and comedic timing getting highlighted on WWF TV. He soon turned heel during the Invasion storyline, becoming the commissioner for the Alliance, and when the Alliance lost the winner takes all match at Survivor Series 2001, Regal was forced to kiss Vince McMahon's ass to get his job back. William Regal is the very first member of the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club. Regal would reach another career milestone at the Royal Rumble in 2002 when he defeated Edge to become the Intercontinental Champion. Regal held on to the title until WrestleMania 18 where he dropped the gold to Rob Van Dam, but it must have been quite special for Regal to work here at his very first WrestleMania. The same week he dropped the IC title, Regal recaptured the European title when he defeated Diamond Dallas Page on the March 21st episode of SmackDown. At the inaugural WWF draft, Regal found himself on the red team as part of the Raw brand. He lost and regained the European title to Spike Dudley during this time period, making him a four-time European champion. He would later lose the title to Jeff Hardy in July of 2002 before joining the Un-Americans faction. Regal mainly teamed up with Lance Storm while he was part of the Un-Americans, a team that was capable of having great matches but time constraints seemed to limit what they could really do. That being said, Regal and Storm won the Tag Team Championships on the January 6th, 2003 episode of Raw when they defeated Goldust and Booker T, thanks to Regal's patented brass knuckles. Storm and Regal lost and regained the titles in matches with the Dudley Boys and even defeated the team of Kane and Rob Van Dam at No Way Out 2003, but this would be Regal's last match for over a year. The WWE had a tour of India a few months before where many superstars got sick. Regal got the worst of it by far. There are some conflicting reports here but we will go by William Regal's book. Regal said that he contracted a heart parasite while on this tour in November the previous year. Other reports have said he had a heart condition which caused the right side of his heart to beat out of sequence with the left side which almost killed him. 
Either way, it was serious. Made even more serious when Regal suffered a concussion during this tag match with Van Damme and Kane. He said he drank around 15 pounds of water the next day and saw a few doctors and finally ended up in hospital in Atlanta where he was told he was having problems with his heart. At the time, Regal's heart was beating way too fast and doctors had to administer an electric shock to stop his heart and restart it properly. With this in mind though, WWE decided to take the necessary precautions and keep Regal out of the ring while he got back to 100%. Regal came back to work on the April 5th 2004 episode of Raw when Raw GM Eric Bischoff made him look after Eugene, Eric's kayfabe nephew. Regal eventually grew fond of Eugene which in turn turned him babyface. This led to Regal feuding with Triple H and Evolution, a team who done all they could to use Eugene to their benefit. Regal would continue to feud with Evolution on and off throughout the year, a highlight being when he teamed with Chris Benoit to take on Batista and Ric Flair at Unforgiven 2004. Regal and Eugene would eventually win the tag team titles towards the end of the year, but an injury to Eugene at the beginning of 2005 would force the team to drop the belts. Still hopeful he could win the gold back though, Regal teamed up with old partner in crime Tajiri and the team won the tag titles on the February 14th 2005 edition of WWE Raw when they defeated La Resistance. Regal and Tajiri would drop the titles at Backlash three months later. Regal was then drafted to SmackDown and it was during this time he had a great hard hitting catch match with Chris Benoit on Velocity. Look this up, the full match is on YouTube. Now there is two Regal vs Benoit matches from Velocity in 2005, the one you want to search for is from July 16th. It's a really hard hitting match full of stiff punches, headbutts and loads of receipts. Do check it out. While on Smackdown, Regal turned heel once again and feuded with Scotty Too Hotty and he also teamed up with Paul Burchill. Eventually, Burchill and Regal would split up resulting in a feud that saw William Regal dress up in some quite interesting clothes. From Triple H and Evolution to Tag Team Gold to Scotty Too Hotty and Paul Burchill, one may think that William Regal was now being relegated to the bottom of the WWE ladder like so many other older superstars, but Regal had a lot more to offer the company and his fans. Regal wasn't done just yet and his endearing character would go on to have more success in the WWE. It was going to be a two part series but there's so much more to talk about so let's end it here and in part 3 we will look at Regal's further contributions to pro wrestling.